In this video, I'm gonna show you three easy transformations of thrift flips and trash to treasures that you could simply do with just some paint, maybe some decoupage paper, simple little things that would make a big wow in your home decor. I thrifted this cutting board at Goodwill recently and I just love how it's a blank canvas, it's just plain wood and I can do whatever I want to it. So I went through my scrap stash of decoupage paper and I found this cute little bird and I thought I could do a little something with the bird on there. So I just uh, ripped around the edges to give it an organic look just so they weren't straight edges. And I just gently went all the way around that and I made it so that it would fit just right on my cutting board. I'm going to use some Mod Podge and just section by section slowly put this paper on, just gently rubbing down on it. And then once I get it all on there, I will go over it with my paintbrush and do a good seal on that. Now I didn't bother painting under this. I'm going to just leave it the raw wood. It's light, so it'll still keep that color nice and bright on that paper, which is what I want. You also can see that I left a little bit of a border all the way around my uh, cutting board so that the wood is sticking out. I am going to darken those edges up so I didn't want to have the paper go all the way to the edge. I want to leave it so it almost looks like a, a border frame. Once the picture was dry, I went over the whole thing with my Fusion Clear Wax. I gave it a good seal all over, made sure that I hit all the spots, the sides, edges, everything, and then I went ahead and wiped it back. I then took Antique Wax and went all around the edges, careful not to get it too much on my picture, as I wanted to fade it in a little bit towards the picture but not fully get it uh, darkened with the antique wax. I decided around the edges that I would take the black wax and just go just, just around the edges, just to highlight those a little bit, just adding some different layers of colors on there to get this to look aged and distressed. Once I got the wax the way I wanted, wiped back, it blended in just right. I grabbed my twine, went around several times, four or five times around the top of the board and just made a just a little bow with that and left my ties kind of long, my strings, and just kind of wispy down around the picture. And then I grabbed the burlap little flowers. I think these came from Dollar Tree. So I grabbed one and that I really liked to go with that and set that on top of my bow. So uh, I don't know, I thought it would add a nice look to it. Once I got that on there, I, didn't, I don't think I show it, but I have some Sweet Annie. So I took that and added that underneath my little flower on there. I think this was a sweet transformation of this cutting board, but so easy and fairly quick and I think it made just a huge impact. Let me know what you think. My next project, I'm gonna call this a trash to treasure. I found it in this place right here, which is the free area at my local dump. I call it the free shack. It is certainly not a shack. It's a beautiful brand new big storage uh, unit that they put in and it is a wonderful little place with several tables, as you can see, of all different things. So you know I gotta stop any time that I can to see what I can find to either flip or just clean up and use myself or add to my booth. And uh, I did find some candlesticks here recently that, I don't know, the, the texture, the coloring was not very pretty on them whatsoever, but I like the bones of the candlestick. 
So I decided that I would uh, go ahead and grab them and I knew that I could probably paint them up and make them look a little bit better than what's here. They're looking like they're supposed to be a faux distressing on there maybe and it was just not very pretty. I did try to clean them up a little bit. Uh, it did not work so I just cleaned them to get them clean and decided I was going to paint them. So first thing that I'm going to do is take off these little sharp pokey things that are in the top where you put your wax candles down and it kind of holds them on there. I'm going to take those off. They don't need to be on there and uh, I'm going to get rid of those all together. The next thing I did was grab my black chalk paint and I did two coats all the way around on both of those uh, candlesticks. Once they were totally dry, I went out and sprayed them with my Rust-Oleum Clear spray uh, to seal them up and I did a couple coats of that so I would spray it on let it dry and then do another coat. Now I didn't get an ending picture of this because I ended up putting them in my booth but here is my booth and here is the picture of them there. I just added a couple little uh, baskets that I had done up on top of them to just make them look kind of springy and uh, fun so uh, that's where they are at the moment. Here's another little trash of treasure, another thing that I got from my free area at my local, I call it my dump, but it's actually a transfer station. It's a weird little rooster. I don't know what he's supposed to be, or I thought, oh, well, maybe he's a bookend and the other end is gone, but I don't, I have no idea. But I envisioned something different with this guy, so... I cleaned him up really good and I started to paint him. And I'm using my latte paint because um, I want to do black all over him and I want to distress back to the latte paint and not the white. Uh, I want a warm color underneath him. So I'm giving two coats of this latte paint all over him. His little wings and the details in some of him are very deep. They're carved right in there. So I wanted to make sure that I got right in there with my paintbrush and got all those, I don't know, it was like an orange color in there. Uh, I wanted to get that all cleaned right out so that you couldn't see it at all. So um, he, it actually worked very well, got him covered up nicely, and uh, then I could move on with my next step. So I think um, I've got this painted, but I think what I need to do, because it doesn't really stand very good, it's kind of wobbly, the bottom is very rough. So I'm going to take it down and sand it. But I'm also thinking about cutting his tail here so it kind of goes down at a slant. Because I want to take, so you get an idea, I want to take the greens and use these as kind of his tail feathers. So he'll have some sticking up and he'll have some drooping over like kind of like a rooster has. And I think what I can do is fill it in with some Spanish moss to like kind of get the rounded look. And then what I'm going to do is drill holes in the back here to get that kind of so I can stick those in so they'll stay. I can glue them. Um, so I think what I need to do, because I was going to drill into this, but it's not very thick. So I don't know as it would hold very well. So I think I'm going to cut this off at a slant. So I'm going to go down and do that. I don't think I'm going to get video with that um, because I want to do it super quick and get this project going. So I'm going to sand the bottom and I'm going to um, cut this off at a slant. And then I think I'll be able to do what I want to do because I, I originally was going to keep this back part, but I don't think I'm going to now. What do you think? What do you think I should do? I don't know. I don't really know what I should do because I, he's, I think I could do it from here, but I think it's just going to look weird with this piece sticking up. So I think I need to get rid of that, but I hope I don't screw it up. <laughs> he's already kind of a weird looking guy, so I think it'll be okay. 
Okay, now he looks even weirder, but I think that's gonna help. He sits a little bit better. He's a little wobbly still, but not bad. But I can always fix that later on. But here's his tail. I just took it right off there. Did a couple cuts. So you get it down fairly close to his body, but not too close. So I'm just gonna paint that up. You're not gonna be able to see it, but just in case it kind of peeks through here and there. Looks like he had some red on him at some point. There's a little bit of red there. So he may have been red originally. I don't know. But okay, we're gonna get that painted. Okay, now I'm going to take my black paint and I'm using the chalk paint because I do want to wet distress back to this latte paint. So I'm giving him two full coats. Actually, no, it's one coat. It covered really, really well. I did like a second touch up coat here and there, like on his legs and little spots where I may have missed, but I really didn't need to do two coats. Plus I went back again, like I said, I wet distressed it. So um, I didn't really need to do a full thick, thick coat of the black paint. Just makes it harder to come off. Here he is all painted up with his black paint. I think he is so cute already. He's just got a better paint job, so he looks so much better, but he is missing his beautiful tail. So I can't wait for you to see what I do with this. It just, it comes out better than I expected. But first we have to distress him. So I'm just wet distressing, taking a rag with a little bit of water on it and just rubbing back to that khaki color. Now in between the uh, latte paint, I called it khaki, but it's latte paint. In between the latte paint, before I painted it black, I did spray it with two coats of the Rust-Oleum Clear Spray. So I sealed it up so that when I did distress it back, it only went back to the latte paint and it wouldn't take that off. So that worked really well as you can see here. He's got some distressing. He has some age look to him. I really like how this came out. Now this part, I've never done this before, but for some reason when I saw this guy, I just immediately thought this is what I wanted to do with him and use this greenery as his tail. So the leaves look kind of like feathers and I thought this would be fun to do this. So I got this at Hobby Lobby. I think it was like around $11.99, but it was 40% off their greenery there. So whatever that ends up being. Um, I really like this. Like I said, I think it looks like feathers. So, and I like the droopiness of it. And it also, and I think I show you at some point, I also, it has some shorter ones that stick up. So uh, it, near the, the front of the rooster, it will have pieces that stick up from it. So um, I think that's gonna work really good. So I just took my drill bit there a little bit. It's just a little bit bigger than the greenery stem. And I just drilled a few holes in there and I just trying it out to see. Now I put all the holes in, put all the greenery in before I glued it. I wanted to make sure this is exactly what I wanted to do and uh, make sure it was gonna look right. Now here it's like, ugh, I don't know if this is really gonna work. But once we get it built up and uh, I've heard other people say trust the process, if I have a vision, I just need to trust it and go with it and uh, this worked really well. I think I, I really enjoyed it. As I started to fill up the greenery and make it look fuller and fuller, I really got my vision came through really well. So I just continued on with my rows. I would do the bottom row and then I'd go up to the next one, put in another row, add my greenery, the next, the next. So I think I did four, I did three longer rows and then the fourth one I did uh, just a couple, I don't know, three or four on the very top of really short ones to kind of cover up the um, the tails, the ends of the greenery that were going into the chicken uh, rooster. So this is what he looks like. Look at how absolutely adorable that is. I just can't believe how stinking cute he is. So then I went back piece by piece and glued the greenery in so that it would stay and not fall out. 
And as you can see here, he's all glued up and ready to go. So I wanted to cover up the glue that you could see and kind of just cover up the stems of the greenery. So I'm adding the Spanish moss around the edges. I think that adds a nice rustic touch to this and just kind of finishes it off. It, it doesn't show the glue and I don't know. I just think it gives a nice prim rustic touch. And I hope you like him as much as I do because I think he is just so cute compared to how I picked him up. I wasn't really sure exactly how this was going to turn out, but I'm really glad that I did this. And I'll be looking for more of these, so maybe I can do a few more of this style with, I mean, with more of these. I'm not going to pass them up anymore. This is just, this was fun to do. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. As always, let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite if you have one. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And make sure you check out this next video on the screen. I know you'll find some inspiration there. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.